Well, um, one of the more interesting things that chapter 27, Light, discusses is the, the concept of polarization. In the section after eclipses, the author introduces the idea that light is a wave that can be polarized. I want to talk to you about what polarization is, what a polarization filter is and does, why it might be useful, and show you some applications of it in real life. I'll show you the book in a moment, but the author talks about the idea that a wave, like the one I'm going to set up in this slinky, can vibrate in a particular plane. Like a piece of paper is a planar surface. Depending on how you orient that paper, its plane is in a different direction. Let me show you. I could shake the slinky sideways, horizontally, and I get a wave that is horizontally oriented. Because it has only one plane, horizontal in this case, we say it's horizontally polarized. So the wave is vibrating in the horizontal plane. Likewise, I could shake the slinky up and down, and we would say that that wave is vertically polarized. In other words, polarization is when there's a preferred direction to the vibration of a wave. In the text, they demonstrate that the girl is shaking the rope vertically on the left here, and that, that results in a wave that is vertically oriented and vibrating in the vertical plane. In the second rightmost part of the image, she's shaking the rope horizontally, and that results in a wave that is horizontally oriented. Um, the text just goes on to discuss that we have two waves here, A in the top figure and B in the bottom one. Um, I think we can see clearly which one is vertically polarized. That's right, figure A is vertically polarized and B is horizontally polarized. One of the things that physics textbooks often say is that the fact that light can be polarized is indicative or indicates that it's a transverse wave. So it turns out that longitudinal waves cannot be polarized. So sound cannot be polarized. Light is a transverse wave and as such can be polarized. We haven't learned about electric fields and magnetic fields, but the nature of light is that it is an electric and a magnetic wave. It is an electromagnetic wave. It's really two oscillating fields. One is an electric field that oscillates one way and a magnetic field that oscillates perpendicular to that electric field. There's a pretty good picture on page 753 of a of what that wave might look like if we could vis visibly see the two oscillating fields. The electric field is on the y-axis, it's the, um, the magenta, and the magnetic field which is perpendicular to that is the teal blue colored field. I don't want to get too in the weeds about the electric magnetic nature of light. We haven't studied electricity or magnetism yet. I do want to say that vibrating electrons in matter, in materials, are what causes electromagnetic waves. And so it is truly the vibrations of electrons that, were, that gives off light in the, the sun, or a hot candle, or a light bulb. However, in the case of our sun or a light bulb, you have trillions of molecules even in a light bulb, that are all oscillating in random directions. So their electrons are oscillating in, in random directions. They don't have organization, an orderly direction to their vibration. It's random. So if we think about a light bulb for a minute, it gives off light that is truly not polarized the vibrations are not all one way, all vertical or all horizontal. So the light that's coming out of here 
some of the electrons are vibrating vertically, some are vibrating horizontally, some are vibrating obliquely or at a diagonal to that. And there's, there's no organization to the vibration. However, there are materials that we can pass the light through that block light that is not oscillating in one of those directions. And a lot of times we use this picket fence analogy. In your textbook, they use this picket fence analogy. Imagine you're, you're jiggling this rope vertically up and down, and it's allowed to pass through the gaps on a picket fence. We, we kind of talk about this fence acting as a polarizer. It doesn't let through light that isn't vertical because the fence slats are oriented vertically. Now, if you had two such fences back to back, any light that gets through the first fence can still get through the second fence because the, the orientation of the slats is parallel. But over here in the second drawing, imagine vertically jiggling rope. The jiggles get through the first fence because its slats are oriented vertically. But then if that rope were to go through a horizontally oriented picket fence, the up and down vibrations would be blocked and what comes out is no vibration at all. In the same way, light can be put through a polarizer and I want to talk about that real quick and then demonstrate it for you. So again, light, light from a typical source like a light bulb or the sun or the sky is typically not pol polarized. It's vibrating in all possible directions. But if we place a filter, and in reality, a polarizing filter, when you look at it, doesn't look like anything special at all. It just looks like, you know, sunglasses material, like tinted plastic. It just reduces some of the light. But it turns out it actually does something special. It reduces selectively some of the light. If the axis of the polarizer is oriented vertically, then it only lets through the vertical component of the light. All of this is blocked. And so what comes through is only the vertically oriented light. How do we know that that's true? I mean, can we test that? It sounds like magic to me. Well. If we have a second polarizing filter and we orient it so that its polarizing axis is horizontally oriented, then this light cannot get through this. And so what we get, we get nothing. No light is transmitted. I'd like to show this to you and then show you something about reflected light. And then we'll see a short video made by someone who's a fishing enthusiast, someone who's obsessed with trout fishing, um, because it turns out that um, polarized sunglasses are the fisherman's friend. I have the old, an old overhead projector here, and because of the glare from the um, skylight, I just laid this towel down to kind of get rid of the glare. But I, I turned on the projector, and as my camera adjusts to the amount of light, um, you'll see that I've placed two polarizing filters on the projector. Now, you can't see that there are little lines in here. Um, of course you cannot. Um, in reality, it's really due to the plastic molecules. They're actually made of an extruded polymer, and so the, on, on a very, very, very small level, on, on the order of the wavelength of light, there are little lines on here. We can't see them. Um, but that's what a polarizing filter is made out of. Um, at any rate, if I place one on top of the other, it gets slightly less bright, slightly dimmer, but, but not much. And that's because the axis of this filter and the axis of this filter are parallel to each other. Let's just say for the sake of argument that the lines that you can't see that are there are in the same direction. And so when you place them one on top of each other, we don't really see any real difference in the amount of light that is transmitted. 
But if I rotate this one 90 degrees, you'll see that it blacks out, that there, there is no light transmitted because the lines are perpendicular to each other. They're, they're crossed. Instead of being parallel, they are crossed. Um, if I rotate it back, we get light again, maximum here when they're parallel, and then again, rotating 90 degrees and we get no light at all. This last little demonstration before the trout <laughs> video, I think it helps illustrate the situation. So the periodic table is being lit by the fluorescent lights that are on the ceiling. And as a result, it's reflecting that light and that light is not polarized. So one filter doesn't do anything. But once light is passed through a, the first filter, a second filter can test whether this, the light coming through here is polarized or not. If it's polarized, we should see a change in the intensity when we rotate the filter. But again, the light coming from the periodic table is not polarized. How do I know that? Well, do you see a difference between this and this and this? And the answer is, well, no, you don't see a difference. So the light coming from the periodic table is unpolarized. However, something very interesting happens when light reflects off of a shiny non-metallic surface. Now, I think you can see in the windows to these cabinets that the periodic table is visible, reflected in the glass. Now, I'm gonna place the polarizing filter in front of the camera, and I'm gonna rotate it. And look at the periodic table in the glass. So whereas the periodic table straight up doesn't change its intensity, the reflection of the periodic table does go away when we rotate the polarizing filter 90 degrees and comes back and goes away. So what does this tell us? It tells us that the act of reflecting off of the glass polarized the light. The light coming from the periodic table was not polarized, but once it had reflected, it reflected in a way that what came off that reflection is slightly polarized. Many surfaces do this. Lakes, water, any flat surface that is non-metallic, like water, water on a roadway, snow, um, the reflection off of that flat, shiny surface is typically polarized. Now, it gets polarized in the horizontal direction. And think about um, skipping stones at the beach, right? Like when you want to throw a rock and have it skip on the water, you try to find a flat rock and you throw it so that its broadside skips the water, not the edge, the sharp edge, that would go into the water. And in the same way, it's the light waves that are horizontally oriented that reflect best. So that when we see that glare off of a water, lake, river, snow field, it's already been horizontally polarized. So we wear sunglasses that have vertical axes to eliminate that horizontal light. This short video um, just that I found on the internet is, again, someone who's kind of into fishing, showing you in a dra dramatic way why you'd want to have polarized, polarized sunglasses when you're fishing.